Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. Let's talk about this colony back here that has a 30 plus percent infestation rate. So we've already done three rounds of oxalic acid vapor. We got the little entrance right there. We uh, we smoked the bees in, jetted in. We're going to inspect that colony real quick, but we closed them up for about 10 minutes. Now it's got a screen bottom board on it with a sticky board underneath, so we close that up. But I'm, I'm curious to see if these five treatments will drop them back where they need to be, which is really an alcohol wash of a zero or one. So once we get to that point, we will definitely be showing you what the alcohol wash turns out to be. Hopefully it'll be pretty low. I'm not super optimistic. Um, I, I really do think oxalic acid vapor is a good treatment, but I just don't know if it's as, as efficient as they say it is. It's that easy. Just gotta have the right kind of fuel and get it started right. I might as well just load it while we're here. We'll do more bee work, I'm sure, here in a second. That just comes from my my yard. Just uh, let it grow a little tall, let the clover produce a little bit for the bees, and then uh, the kids rake it up. It's kind of fun. All right. Now there's not a whole lot of bees in here. This top box is mostly empty. They've dropped in population, which is not that surprising. So we're just going to drop down in here. Now they have plenty of food. We've been giving them patties, which I think is important because you have to remember the varroa mites are not feeding on the bee's blood. They're feeding on the bee's fat body organ that is on the underside of their abdomen. And so they're robbing them of nutrition. And we're kind of still somewhat in a dearth. We have a dearth of nectar right now. The, the pollen's starting to come in. They got plenty of weight up in here. And, uh, okay. Here's the remainder of the patty I gave them a few days ago. So this is three treatments in. They still definitely need some treatments. Now, we did requeen this colony. But that population is not that great. All right. The queen was pretty old. This colony was originally from a swarm, but check that out. That's not looking too bad. The brood is starting to get a little bit of a better pattern here. Let's see what else we can find. See how the bees are running around like that? I haven't even smoked them that much. This bee, they haven't gotten rid of all of the offspring off of the last queen. But these bees were always very runny. And they just, they run around the frames with the slightest bit of smoke. It's extremely annoying. They weren't really aggressive or anything. They just, they were very runny on the frames. So we introduced a different queen. So here's another good frame of brood. The larvae is looking really white, pearly white and healthy. They're, they're not discolored. You probably can't see it really good with the lighting, I'm not sure. But that's really important. We're not seeing a lot of discolored larvae. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw some mites on these bees. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, the larvae is looking really good down in there. Really, really good. The, queens, the new queen's laying eggs all over the place. She's one of ours, of course. So that's, that's promising. Most of the times when you have an infestation this high, the viruses are really bad. Oh, there's the queen right there. And uh, she's just going to town lane, so... That's good. So, I mean, ultimately, I think if we can get the mites under control and we baby this colony, they're going to be okay. Now, I think there's a lot of variables when it comes to mite problems, viruses, and your bees surviving the, uh, the mites and the viruses. So the mites are a big problem, obviously. They go around and they steal nutrition from your bees and they inject them with viruses. Now, constantly you have mites in your hive. Every hive in this country has mites. Um, they just do. So just because you're not seeing them doesn't mean that they're not in there. 
If you're seeing them usually, that either means one, you don't have a lot of brood in your hive, so they're all exposed, or two, if you have a lot of brood, then that means usually they're pretty stinking high. But the problem is, once those viruses start taking hold, and the viruses have been around, a lot of them, for a very long time in this country. Now, some of them are newer, but the viruses are not able to move themselves around the hive. They have to be spread by something, and the mites are the perfect uh, vector for the viruses. They just go around and they just inject it all throughout our bees, and the viruses typically are what kills your bees. Now, so one thing you all have probably heard if you've been around beekeeping for a little while, or if you've experienced it yourself, I know I have, especially in the past, where you have colonies that look really good in spring, they're still fairly decent in summer, they start declining into fall, and then usually before even winter comes around, they're already gone. Or they're really tiny, you might find the queen left and a handful of bees, but there's plenty of honey in there, and you're like, it's CCD, oh my goodness. And since it's a little acronym, it's even scarier than it really is. And millions and millions of dollars have been spent on that when I wish they would have focused that on the varora mite instead and developing some better controls and maybe uh, making a few more legal that are plenty safe but what happens is as your bees become more and more infected with viruses and it's not just viruses if they become really infected with other things like nosema or tracheal um, bees when they get so far gone they realize this and they start chucking themselves outside the hive and if they're healthy enough they're going to fly a long ways out of the hive so you know you think oh my goodness my colony swarmed out and it very well could be that it just reached such a tipping point, especially if you haven't been in there for several weeks, that they're just so full of viruses that the bees just start leaving the hive trying to get the sickness away from the colony. But at this point, it's, it's far, far too late. But they leave, and you might end up with a queen or even no bees left. You know, like, I've still got all this honey, you know, CCD and all that stuff. Well, it's, it's the viruses. I believe we're going to be able to save this colony. One of the reasons I requeened this colony is because, and this is my opinion, I have no scientific data to prove this, just observations, way too many observations of this, where you try to save a colony that shows symptoms of viruses, and thankfully this one didn't show much, but the queen, I believe, is laying eggs that already have a lot of viruses in them because the queen is infected. And I, I do believe the queens can become infected. I've seen varora mites on queens. Usually bees are very good about keeping Aurora mites off of the queen because you know they're constantly paying attention to her. That's part of their job. The ones that are you know, going around and making sure she's completely taken care of, whether it's feeding her when she needs it, maybe even um, gobbling up an extra egg or two that gets laid randomly around, recycling that protein and fat, or grabbing some of the pheromone off of her and spreading it through the colony. If that doesn't happen, then a lot of times they have issues with that queen. They got to get that pheromone spread around the colony. But, you know, if a queen comes down with the virus, and I do believe that they can, then her eggs are going to have viruses in them. And I believe they'll start cannibalizing them. Can't prove this whatsoever, but I do believe that that happens. And hopefully we'll get some research to either confirm or deny that. We definitely need more information on that front. But just in case the queen might have been infected with viruses, I requeened her completely. And um, hopefully we're going to save this colony here. So... There's not much to it. We're going to do two more rounds of oxalic acid vapor, and then we are going to do an alcohol wash in this colony. Hopefully, we're going to wash a zero, one, or a two, which is all pretty manageable mite numbers. But I, I honestly, seriously doubt we're going to have a zero or a one. Um, I just, oxalic acid vapor does a fairly good job. I believe it's more of a control when you already have things under control. And that's, that's pretty much all the treatments out there. None of them are very good about taking a high mite load like this and fixing the colony. Don't ever let your mites get this high. This colony is one of my experimental colonies because it was a swarm. I was hoping to be able to maybe do some breeding from it. That is not happening. Thanks for watching our videos. If you have any comments or questions on this colony or anything else, leave them below.